Hi, I'm Kat. This is the uh, newbie safety course for the LARP the Pearl Gate. For general safety, don't do anything illegal. If it's illegal off-site, it's illegal on-site. You can steal, murder all you want as your character, don't do it for real. Don't have any open flames at all. This includes candles, barbecues, whatever, without prior proof. We are in the middle of the woods, we don't want to go up and smoke. Uh, what you just saw was an example of pause. It's a game mechanic where you actually pause the game if there's a dangerous situation about to happen, or if someone has just been hurt, or where the safety of the game out of play is an issue. When you're done with a pause, Assuming that's a personal pause between you and another person, then the person who called the pause goes and says 3, 2, 1, game on, and then continue the game. Uh, for a game-wide pause, when someone's actually gotten seriously hurt in combat, or when uh, a director or producers need to describe something to the entire game, everyone who can hear the pause will stop immediately whatever they're doing and listen to whatever needs to be said. And then the producer or director will say 3, 2, 1, game. Two normal. You okay? Pause! Call a medic. In the case of a medical pause, where an actor is seriously injured, not their character, the person who's injured should be the one to call the pause. Unless that person is incapacitated and obviously can't call their own pause. In that case, someone else should call it. In either case, in a medical pause, everyone should take 10 feet away from the injured person and take a knee, so that a medic responding to the call can have room to work. Triage? Lean to death. Player permission to touch? Sure. All right. <laughs> Triage. Lean to death. Player permission to touch? Yeah. Dragon? Player permission to touch? No. I'm dragging you. Well, you just saw were a couple of examples of player permission. You always need player permission to touch another actor. Period. End of story. You can only normally interact with another player through a weapon or spells. In the first example, player permission was granted, but it exceeded the normal amount of player permission. Most people don't want to be slung on someone's shoulder. The second example is more appropriate. That was a role play way of dragging someone off the field. And then the last example was someone refusing player permission. In that case, you just have to pretend that you're actually dragging and they have to follow you. The actor who just passed by me was in a white headband. This means that he is out of game. He doesn't exist as far as I'm concerned. If I'm in play, I can't see him, interact with him, or anything else. Likewise, he can't interact with me and destroy my in-play atmosphere. When you're wearing a white headband, it is against the rules to loiter in an in-game area. That means you cannot eat out of game inside of the in-play tavern, nor can you wander around a field battle or anything else while you're out of play. If you're out of play, get to where you are to where you need to go. An actor in an orange headband is medically out of play. This means that they have a medical condition that prevents them from engaging in combat. This means that they cannot engage or participate in any sort of combat, which includes healing, buffing, debuffing their friends. If you wish to negatively impact someone in an orange headband who is medically out of play, then all you need to do is go over to said actor and say, I'm killing you. Killing strike one, killing strike two, killing strike three. There are some skills or spells that last for a single combat, or can only be used once per combat. Combat is defined as the activation of a skill or a verbal, and lasts until there's a significant pause, usually lasting several minutes. Combat ends when no significant offensive actions have taken place. Of course you're free to All right, for combat, you want to pull back your sword 45 degree angles. Right after you hit, you land the blow, you pull it back. This is to prevent for you to do hits like this. Obviously the damage wouldn't count normally. That's not how you hit somebody with a real sword. You pull back, you don't want to pull back more than 90 degrees. 
because you're obviously, even if you don't mean to, you're getting more force behind your sword. You don't want people to get hurt. The object of the combat is to let people know they've been hit and not hurt them because it's still a game. Now, every time you swing, you call damage. So I have a one-handed edge sword. This is going to start off with two, base damage of two. So I say one or two normal, sorry, two normal, every time I hit. So I go two normal, two normal, two normal. Two um, for most weapons, you have the option of different taglines. This is a blunt weapon, this is a mace. I can call two blunt, or I can call two normal. There are certain monsters that take more damage from edged versus blunt. Sometimes you may want to call those taglines instead of normal. Uh, call your damage every time that you intend to hit somebody, whether or not you actually do. So even if I missed him, I still say two blunt, two normal. And remember, in combat, safety's first. This is a spell packet. It is filled with bird seed. It is essentially a small bean bag. This is what we use to represent spells. Before you can throw a spell packet, you must say a complete verbal. By the power of light, I stitch your wounds. Heal five. Now, I have thrown a spell at Tim. He has now healed five points of damage. <laughs> verbal must be completed before you can throw a spell. I cannot say by the power of light, I... anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't count. Now, uh, with every verbal, you must also state the effect that it does. If it binds someone, you also have to say that if it heals someone, you say heal, have many points. Or if it's damage, you say the causative agent, like fire, uh, in ten. That way they would know that they lose five points due to fire damage. If you miss somebody with a spell packet, by the power of light, I stitch your wounds, heal five. I have lost that spell. It didn't hit him, it had no effect. However, I lost that spell from my memory. A spell bag may be constructed by any player. The instructions are on the website. However, they cannot come in the color orange. Orange is reserved for alchemy. Everything alchemy is orange, period, end of story. A spell will always take effect on another player regardless of where it hits them. If it hits them in hits them in their shield. It would still affect them, no matter what. Yeah, unless it hits them in an illegal area. The illegal areas are! Um, do not hit someone in the groin. Do not hit someone in the upper torso if they happen to be female. Do not hit anyone above the shoulders, including and specifically the neck and the head. Um, the, the other illegal area is the feet and the ankles. Certain moves in combat are illegal, such as if you have a shield, Shield bashing is one of them. You can't lunge towards your target and hit them. Even though this is all foam, can't do it. Second one, you can't, what they call turtle shell, is when she's trying to swing at me, I just duck down and everything, everything pretty much is covered with my shield and only exposing illegal areas that you can't hit in the first place. Tutorial. Triage. Bleeding to death. Killing strike one, killing strike two, killing strike three. Triage. Dying. Search. 